In this very quick video, I will explain to you how you can go about renaming your module as well as renaming the overall campaign master that you're working off of. So why might you want to be able to do that? Well, the first thing is, is you might put a placeholder name in or a, a code name that you're using internally to, to, to hide the true fact of, of what that module is going to be. Or uh, in the event that you're using a placeholder, you just haven't settled on a name that you're happy with just yet. And it turns out it's actually very easy to do. The first thing that you'll want to do is before you even load Fantasy Grounds, you'll want to rename the parent directory of the campaign itself. Now this is found under your app data, roaming, smiteworks, fantasy grounds, campaigns, and then the name of the actual folder that you gave uh, as the name of your campaign. And in my case, it was a, sen uh, a sample adventure dash master. And all I had to do was rename the sample adventure part and change it to Nightmare of Skullcrack. The second thing that you want to do once you actually load up Fantasy Grounds is to change any of the groups that uh, you've already assigned to any of the story elements you've put together. So to do that, all you have to do is click on this drop-down arrow once you've got your story or your, uh, let's say, NPC element section open. Drop that down, and you'll see here that I've already renamed this. And I will show you how to do that when I do the NPC one, because I've intentionally left that uh, untouched for right now. So I went in, I clicked on the Edit Groups, and then I modified the name that is uh, set up here. And it used to be a sample adventure. Now it's the Nightmare of Skullcrack. And once I did that and, and stopped editing the actual group, all of the items that were previously assigned to the sample adventure automatically became part of the new adventure, or the, the new name. And the reason being is I'm changing the name of the group. I'm not changing the group, so I didn't have to do any dragging and dropping. And you'll see that when I do the NPCs. So if I load up the NPCs, you'll see here that I still have a sample adventure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to expand that, edit, and just to save myself some typing, I'm copy and paste, copying and pasting so a sample adventure. And I'm just going to overwrite that and then stop editing. And what you will see is that all of the elements that were originally part of the original sample campaign are now part of the new campaign. We're not yet done. The next thing you'll want to do, and I'm not sure where that's coming from, but anyway, um, the next thing that you'll want to do is hit the export option again, or type in the export option again in the chat window, or go to the library and hit the export option here, and rename the file name, the name of this, and I have chosen to take the opportunity to actually change the category. And the reason for that is I can now, based on the adventure that I'm writing here, foresee myself creating a whole series of adventures around Skullcrake. I like the area. It's got a lot to it based on the stuff that I've added to its, its canon, if, if it, it goes any further than my adventures. Then it allows me to now group all of those adventures into one category. So the plan that I have for this particular campaign is that you might be a level 1 to a level 3 or level 5. Uh, character. I haven't decided on whether I'm going to add in the level 5 aspect of this uh, adventure into this adventure itself or into a second adventure that leads into the additional quests that are associated with this particular adventure. So for now, I'm thinking, quote-unquote, that I will be taking this particular adventure between uh, from level 1 to level 3. Level 4 and 5 will be an entirely different adventure that I throw into the same category and call it a different name or uh, a sequel to this particular name that I have here. I haven't fully settled on that particular part of it yet. Now, I still don't have a thumbnail, and I haven't gotten any tokens that I'm planning on exporting just yet. And once again, I'm not an artist. I don't have those graphical skills. Um, so as a result, I'm probably not going to do much of anything with these unless I can uh, enlist the aid of an artist who has those skills. 
Um, and then you don't even need to do anything. You don't have to hit export to save these changes. You can just literally close that. And the next time you load up the export functionality, your changes are done. So for the rest of this tutorial series, I am going to be using this group name going forward. And that is literally as complicated as it is to actually make a change to your campaign name. And I wanted to show that on camera so that someone else might be able to learn from this process. I wish to thank you for taking the time to watch this particular video. I hope you found it informative and useful to familiarizing yourself with Fantasy Grounds in general and that you had fun in the process. If you found the video useful and you liked the content of the particular video, go ahead and click that like button to let me know. And if you have any questions specific to the topic covered by this particular video, or just have some comments in general, please feel free to post something in the comments section. I will do my best to respond to any questions that are asked. Additionally, I do release content quite regularly, and it's generally specific to Fantasy Grounds or 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons at this time. So if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out, go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell to ensure that notification is sent to you when I release a new video.